All right, kids, here we go. Lesson one, two, types of data. Our main ideas here are making conclusions about populations, uh, finding different types of data, but mainly one of the key ones is looking at a statistic versus a parameter. And so we'll start off looking at that first idea there. What is the difference between a parameter and a statistic? Well, good thing you asked. I think I know the answer. The parameter is uh, a number measurement that describes some population. Whereas the statistic, same thing, but it only describes sample. All right, so again, not the Death Star, do not be confused. This is the world, and then here's your little sample, right? So a statistic will describe that, whereas the parameter will describe the whole thing, okay? Um, most of the time, you're gonna be dealing with statistics. That's why the class is called statistics, all right? So here we have a parameter. Now. Again, this is just a parameter for the US high school students, correct? So it isn't like the whole world, but in the sense of that being a parameter of a complete population, shall we say. So we sampled 8,505 and 44 and a half of them texted while driving during the last 30 days. All right, so is this a parameter? Is it a statistic? Well obviously, since we just sampled a bit of them, the 44.5% is the statistic. Okay, and this group that it applies to is this 8,505. That's kind of the sample. Now, again, we could grab our calculators and take, well, if we trusted this number, 44.5, and multiplied it by 17.2 uh, million, I get roughly 7.6 million. So as a parameter, if I applied this on the whole population, and again, you'd have to be confident that you're accurate. Um, and by the way, 8,500 is a substantial number of kids. We would have 7.6 million uh, students who have now um, been texting at least once during the last 30 days while they drive. Um, couple things. Number one, I'm guessing the uh, adults, it's very similar. Uh, number two, uh, this is why we need cars which self-drive. It, it would eliminate so many of these careless accidents that occur. And um, number three, uh, this is why um, your insurance rates get to be so high because of this negligence of people as they drive. All right, second type of data, quantitative versus categorical. Mm, pretty easy, I think. Quantitative, it's a number, it's got units, you can count it, right? Whereas a categorical data is technically um, names and labels. So these are, we refer to them as non-numerical. Now be careful, non-numerical doesn't mean that there's no numbers, example. Zip code, right? Looks like a quantitative, right? Because it's a number, but be careful. We can't add or subtract. It doesn't got units. Therefore, it's a category. It's categorical data, right? Age, quantitative. Month, month could actually go either way. Um, most of the time, I'm gonna guess, if you're comparing you know, from this date to that date, then it's a number. Um, but if they say like how many people were born in a particular month, that's a category. Right? So mass, oop, mass is quantitative. Okay. Discrete and continuous. Hopefully you've seen this term before. I feel like I'm whispering, like this is like an ASMR video of uh, some sort, but everybody else is asleep in this house, and so I'm trying not to wake people up. Sorry about that. Um, discrete data is countable data. Continuous data is non-countable. 
Um, you cannot count heights. Why can't you count heights? Um, because you could have like an 11.3 and 11.4, right? And there's like a number between them. And no matter what two numbers you pick, you can always find a number in between those numbers, no matter how close you make them, okay? So temperatures, right? They are not discrete. Uh, those temperatures uh, are continuous. Age. Now, most of the time, age is continuous, right? We have months, days, seconds, right? But uh, if you talk to little kids, they'll ask, like, how old are you? And if you were to say something like 15.7, they would say you're nuts, right? Uh, you're either 15 or 16, so... Uh, siblings. That's a discrete one. Hopefully you don't have any partial siblings hanging around. Here is uh, the trickiest level of measurement. Again, it's separating out the, the bees data items uh, in looking at them from how they measure. Uh, first of all, much like categorical, we have what we would call a nominal meaning it's like an eye color or yes and no. So I'm starting at the bottom, okay? So that's a simple one, ordinal. This um, may now have numbers like rankings. There is an order to them, um, but there is no differences. Meaning if you subtract one ranking from another ranking, it doesn't really give you anything meaningful other than position, right? Um, le your letter grades, these are um, shows you the order, but not, you know, C minus, C minus, um, subtracted from a B minus, you know, how is that different from an A plus to a B plus or something like that, right? Those are not meaningful differences. The greatest challenge you'll find, I think, is between these two things, a ratio and an interval. Both of these are numerical. And notice they measure things, heights, lengths, distance, volumes, right? Body temps, so these are all kind of continuous types of numbers. But some of these numbers have what we would call a natural zero, a starting spot, right? Height, length, you could talk about zeros there. And you can further make ratios. So for example, if you were to say um, something is 20 inches long versus something that is 40 inches long, you could say this one is twice the 20, right? So ratios make sense. Now when you come to temperatures, and if you were to say something is 90 degrees or 180 degrees, right? The next one is not twice as hot. It's only 90 degrees more. So there is no natural zero even for the years, right? 1984 is pegged to year zero, um, which some people call the common era. Other people say that's the year of Christ's birth. So it, these are like arbitrary spots that we put down and zero doesn't really have a particular meaning, okay? Um, also ratios don't make sense. So like how long does it take you to finish a test? If somebody says, oh, it took me 60 minutes to finish a test, and somebody else said it took me 90 minutes, right? Well, this we can clearly see is 1.5 times longer than this one, right? So uh, this would actually be a ratio, um, not an interval, okay? Body temperature would be obviously an interval because there again, it's a temperature and there's no natural zero. Two kind of big ideas here. Uh, first, big data. Um, most of the time, your data items will be much smaller than this. Uh, you need to have special software, special hardware to work with a terabyte of data or a petabyte or an exobyte. Uh, list those out. Those are kind of used in the news, I would say, frequently. So these are things that you should be familiar with. Uh, I don't know if they'll ask you to convert. It's quite impressive. If you have a terabyte of seconds, how many years is that? 
well, I'm going to take 10 on my calculator to the 12th power. And then I'm going to divide that by 60. That's going to turn it into minutes. I'm then going to divide it by uh, 24. And, uh, or sorry, divide it by another 60. And that's going to turn it into hours. Okay. And I'm going to divide it by 24. I've got days. Turn it into 365.249. And that's going to convert it into years. So I have 31,000 years. So basically, we would be back in the Stone Age. Uh, I don't know my history here, but whatever. Okay. Um, if you were that many seconds ago. So it looks like a small number, but it's huge. And um, 10 to the 12th, that would reach well beyond our um, atmosphere. Um, you won't be quite to the moon, but you will be quite a ways up. Google, Microsoft, Walmart, uh, forecasting nuclear explosions, um, determining internet searches or flu epidemics. These are all examples of terabytes. Okay. Uh, last thing for this unit, missing data. If you have data that is not present, for some reason, it's gone. Well, if it's at random, if it's not tied to other data, that's good news. Okay, we we like random missing data. It's not a huge deal as long as you don't not missing a lot of data, obviously. Um, but if it is tied to something else that they left it off, um, typically we call that a reluctance response. So people don't like to give their age, right, or their salary, or um, the sensor fails, uh, well, the sensor fails to read a temperature, that is probably at random, okay? It depends on if it's like, it's not reading the high temperatures, then we can say that that is, uh, there's a reluctance there to high temperatures, but um, we've got to analyze that missing data. Why is it missing data? And so that we have two options. You can delete all the data that that's missing so you can just like with zero out those rows if they're if it's at random missing data then that's okay now again if, if it's people that didn't want to tell you their weight um, then it's not at random and that's a bad idea so you shouldn't delete all that data because you're biasing now because you're removing part of the population that didn't answer for a reason and um, fancy word here impute Sometimes you can substitute values for those data values. You can figure out what it should be, even though they didn't give it to you. And that's permissible under certain conditions. Uh, we have to be careful when we do that. Um, we won't do it in this chapter, don't worry. Um, here is your homework assignment, questions about data. Good luck.